Elizabeth uh, asked me, she said, um, who wins if, if the beach and the ocean have a fight? And I paused for a moment, assuming this was going to be an odd pun. And I was right, because she said, it's tied. Hi, can everyone hear me? Thank you. I, uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll apologize for that bad joke. Um, it's kind of like a punch in the gut. Um, I'm also going to apologize. I am chewing some gum because I'm getting over uh, a cold and it keeps me from coughing. So, um, good morning. How are you guys? Super psyched about React? Yeah. <laughs> So today, um, I'm going to talk about React testing library. Um, I used to use Enzyme with Jest, and now I use React testing library. I really love it, and I'm going to tell you all about that. But a little intro stuff first. So my name, uh, and I've been a JavaScript developer since 2015. And on Twitter, you can find me at Eliz Funk. Um, Actually, up until May 31st, I was working at Priceline, and I just started working at Medium on Monday. And then three days after my new job, I'm like, see ya, I'm out of here, come to the conference. So, but they were super awesome and supportive about it. And more importantly, they were willing to pay for my plane ticket. <laughs> um, and as the MC mentioned, uh, I'm one of the directors, there are actually five women directors um, for the New York City chapter of Women Code, and I'm really passionate about it, and I love being able to pay it forward and share with people. And uh, as was mentioned, I have Women Who Code stickers and Medium stickers, so feel free to come up to me, and if I can find a table, I'll put them out. And I thought I might as well show you my very flirtatious bird, who I don't understand how he knows the difference between men and women since he's a bird. Um, but yes, he does like to flirt, and he does love to tell himself how much he loves himself. So what is this talk going to be about? It's going to be a brief introduction to React Testing Library. It's going to be a comparison of Re React Testing Library and Enzyme. And you'll notice that in the slides, or I may say RTL, short for React Testing Library. Because um, React Testing Library is really a response to Enzyme and a replacement for Enzyme, so it makes sense to compare them. And I'm gonna talk about the benefits of React Testing Library and why I like it so much. Okay, what not to expect. Uh, in 25 minutes, I don't have time to cover every complex testing scenario uh, with React Testing Library, and I don't even know all of them. Um, I can't really do an overview of all the different React testing frameworks and utilities. Um, and snapshots are really not relevant to this particular talk and just wouldn't have time to discuss them, so they're not part of that either. So um, I'm just going to start off by talking a little bit about Just and Enzyme. So how many people here are coding in React right now? All right, that makes sense, right? We are at a React conference. Uh, how many people test their React code? Oh, that's nice. A lot of testing going on, okay, because, you know, how many people here have built an app and did no tests? All right, I see some honest people here. Uh, <laughs> um, so how many people have used Enzyme with Jest? Okay, so a lot of people. So you guys are going to um, know that I share your pain. Um, how many people have actually used React Testing Library? Okay, so for some of you who have already been using React Testing Library, this may be all review, but I'll just thank you in advance for listening. So just to go over it, um, Jest was created by Facebook. It's a JavaScript testing framework. It's actually front-end framework agnostic. Um, so you could use it with Angular or even jQuery. Uh, it comes with the snapshots feature, um, and it ships with JS DOM. So Enzyme it was created by Airbnb. It's a testing utility specifically for React components. It's compatible with all major test runners uh, and assertion libraries. So you don't need to use it with Jest. You could use uh, Mocha and um, Enzyme. Um, and it uses th these mount and shallow functions with JS DOM to render React components. 
So I'll just share my personal enzyme pain points. Uh, because mount, mounts all child components, the tests take longer to run. Uh, I found that if you were using a theme and that was being passed to props, you couldn't get full coverage unless you mounted the component because you had to make sure, well, okay, so let me dial back. How many people use a CSS and JS library? How many people use style components? Okay, so some of the, I may say some things that are biased towards style component just because I've used that a lot on a lot of apps. <clears throat> but when I was using the theme and putting it through props um, and then using it in my style component, I found I had to mount things to get full coverage and have everything run. So may not be the case if you're using something else. Um, but another important thing with Enzyme is that it tests the implementation details and not the end use result that the user would see and experience. You can get around that if you write your tests the right way, but I, th I hope that by the end of this talk, you'll believe me that React testing library is better. And I'm, I, I will be sharing more enzyme pain with you, so don't worry. Uh, okay, so now React testing library. So it was created by Ken C. Dodds as an alternative to Enzyme. He saw all those pain points and he wanted to address them. I don't know Kent, I've never met him. I have no relationship to him, but I thank him. Um, it's, so it's a lightweight utility for testing React components. It avoids testing implementation details. You write more maintainable tests because you're not concerned with the implementation details. And it queries the DOM like a user so that you have confidence in your user interface. And as an extra bonus, I believe it encourages writing more accessible code. And I will show you examples of all of that. So I'm in the interest of time, I'm not gonna leave this on for long, but if you don't believe me, I'll share the slide deck later and you can read Ken himself saying all these things. Um, the more your tests resemble the way your software is used, the more confidence they can give you. So setup's pretty easy, it's just an NPM package. It comes with um, a cleanup function that you can run after each test. Okay, so how does it work? It renders a React element into the DOM and it returns utility functions for testing the component. So you see here, it's used, this is an example right from the docs. Um, you can pull out the functions you want with restructuring as you use this render function to render your app. And you can pass any props you want to the app. And if you have uh, a Redux store or router, you can, wrap your, um, you can wrap your component in those pieces and render all of them together. So, I actually created an example app for just for this talk, um, and I'm calling it Hang Person. How many? <laughs> I'm trying to update it for the 21st century. I mean, don't we want to hang all genders? Uh, so uh, I, it's really a very simple, uh, unassuming app. I just created with Create React app and uh, it uses style components, so th that's a bias in the code that you'll see. Uh, just in case anybody here is not familiar with hang person or hangman, uh, you guess letters in a word, you draw a body part for each wrong guess, and if you have too many wrong guesses, then you lose and you're hanged. Okay, so let's talk about creating a simple test. So um, when I built this, game, I just put a title on the page, an H1 title um, that says hang person. And you can see what the code looks like here. So the style component is this game title, const variable, and it's really just a wrapper for um, a JSX H1 tag. So this is so beautiful. So you have these get by text and get and query by text. Um, that you can pull out when you render the app. And then when you look at your test, it's so easy to both grab the element that you need 
and to understand the code. Oh, if I get by text from this rendered component, it should be true. And the game is not called hamburger, so I'm not gonna find that, that'll be falsy. Easy, right, very simple. Um, the one little gotcha is, and I have this in the slide, is use get when the element exists and you use query if you wanna test for negative value. If you use get to test for negative value, your unit test will just fail. And that's pretty well documented if you look at the React testing library docs. Okay, so React testing library versus Enzyme. What, what does Enzyme look like in this situation? So it doesn't look too bad, right? We're still just rendering something with the word shallow. But look at the expect. It's I expect to find, what am I looking for? A game title. So I'm trying to find the name of my style component, um, not the text that would render for the user. And I'm expecting it to have a length of one. Um, it's just not as readable. But this was my first attempt and it failed anyway. Um, so here's my failure. So game title's not defined. So I'm like, wait a second. I know I have a game title piece there. So I went ahead and I did a debug and I see, ooh, this is ugly. This is what uh, Enzyme's actually creating. Style.div style.h1, there are all kinds of style divs, and the actual components you can see here, um, word to guess, guess, progress, hang person. So this is looking a lot like my React code, and a lot less like what I might see if I inspect my code in Chrome, and look at the HTML. So I could not, since I couldn't grab it, by even the name of the style component, I was forced to add an attribute just for testing, and I created this data .te slash test ID game title, and now I'm finding data test ID game title to have length of one. So how many people think it'd be better to say get by text and the text? Yeah, some of you. Some of you aren't sold yet, that's okay. Um, but I, here's something funny, too, about Enzyme. So this is shallow, so I thought, well, what, what happens if I use mount? So I swapped shallow with mount, ran the same test, and it failed. Hmm. Wait a second, isn't this like, the, I'm just rendering it, it's still the same code, but now it's coming back with a length of three. But there's only one H1 tag on the page that has hangman. Uh, so if I wanted to use mount, then I'd have to change it to have length three, and now I feel like this test makes even less sense. Like, why would you have three of an element that should only be rendered once? So I feel like Enzyme starts to take you away from what the user would experience. And also, think about this test, and you come back to it six months from now, after you write it, or you're not the developer who wrote it and you're looking at it and you're like, what the blank is data test ID game title to have length three? It doesn't have three letters. It's not on the page three times. So I'll let you think about that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> just to get deeper into the examples, I'm gonna talk about user events and coverage for class functions, specifically React classes. Um, and I think you'll see even more where some of Enzyme's weaknesses are. So just to give you some context, I have um, enter a word to guess with an input field, click the button, start the game. It sets that word as the word to guess. And then only after you click start the game will you see underscores for the number of letters in the word. So in this case, the word was bird, four letters. If it was uh, dog, it'd be three letters, three underscores. So just to give you a look at the underlying code, uh, create new game takes an argument word. It's pushing all these underscores into a variable that's on state. Um, and you can see the set state, so. Okay, so simulation of user-fired events. So React Testing Library gives you um, a function that you can import at the top of your fi test file called fire event. 
and you can use your get uh, functions to get things. And again, it's all very natural. I'm getting the label by text, enter a word to guess, which is actually visible on the screen. I'm clicking a button that says start the game. Um, I'm changing, I took a little shortcut here. I didn't do every individual keystroke. I just changed the input value to bird. And then I can fire a click on that start the game button. And I am using length, but it makes a little more sense because I'm looking, get all by text, the underscores that are supposed to appear, and then there should be four now that we use the word bird. Worked beautifully. So <clears throat> this is what I mean when I talk about testing implementation details. Here's the same example with Enzyme, and there are better ways to write Enzyme tests, but Enzyme will still let you do this and if you're a developer and you're under a lot of stress from a product manager to get that feature done as quickly as possible and you can't commit your code unless you have 100% coverage and this is easier, some of us may do the easier way to test. So here we go. I'm mounting my app. I'm creating this wrapper which represents my component. But Enzyme gives us this function instance. How many people here have used instance? Yeah, a lot of people. So that all of a sudden now gives you access to all those functions, right? So I can say instance create new game. That's the function that runs when you click that button. And then I can look at the state to say instance state game board to have length four. But that's not looking at the actual DOM to see that those pieces are actually showing. So my argument and what Kent Dodds was also saying is that you can trust your code more because you're really trust testing the UI and not the implementation details. So this example also shows why Retect, bleh, React testing library also helps you write more accessible code and it's because of the query functions that come with it. So I wrote this, um, this is this question text where it's, it's asking, uh, you know, pick a word to guess, and you have your input field and the button. So after writing the test, so sorry, let me go back. I was like, hmm, what am I going to grab here? Um, I have some text, but I have the input field. The input field is blank, so I can't really get by text for the input field. So React Testing Library allows you to look for the label text and then find the corresponding input field. So you'll notice before, I didn't have all the pieces that were connecting the label to the input field because I could be lazy and take a shortcut. But now it's encouraged me to actually put in good stuff. And I can find it with the ARIA labeled by. So, hmm, something was wrong. And React Testing Library actually caught a syntax error that I typed for how to connect those labels. So, and I don't know about you, but I love a really beautifully worded error message. So, um, you know, script failed is not that descriptive. Uh, so here we have found a label with the text of enter a word to guess. However, no form control was found associated to that label. Make sure you're using the for attribute or aria labeled by attribute correctly. So that actually fixed my code in a great way for accessibility. I don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think Enzyme's gonna do that for you. Certainly not as clearly. So now I've updated to use ID, because that's how you do it when you're using aria labeled by. And um, I hope I've convinced you, maybe some of you are a little more convinced that uh, React Testing Library is better. But let me go one step further. We're almost done. Uh, I'm just going to show you the debugging because it's going to give you a little bit more of a visual um, of how uh, React Testing Library is rendering the DOM. Do you guys all remember what Enzyme looked like when it was rendering the DOM? So. Um, when you're debugging, you can add this pretty DOM uh, function that allow you to output to the console. 
So here you see I have console log, pretty DOM, and you also, in addition to these functions, you can put container here, you can destructure out container. And um, when you, so you can do pretty DOM, your container, whatever you're targeting, um, and then it will look like this. So you notice I'm not seeing anything that has to do with style components or React. This looks just like what I would see if I inspected my HTML in the console. So um, it's showing me the minified style components class names that got added. Uh, I'm seeing my div, my h1, keeps going, keeps going. So this is what it's looking at when it's trying to grab pieces. Maybe I should be a little more specific. This is what React testing library is looking at when you are grabbing or hooking into the things you're trying to find and test. Okay, so just to wrap it up, React testing library. Hopefully I've convinced you. It's easier to write tests. It ensures that the app works as expected. It doesn't test React implementation details, which makes the code more maintainable. Because if you're checking to see if you know, state changed or your function changed, what if you change the names of those functions or your state variables because now you have two games and you have to specify? Um, it, it really just doesn't care about that. You can refactor the code and you're really only concerned with the UI. Obviously, the UI changes, then you might have to change your tests. And also, it promotes writing more accessible code. And in addition to the examples I showed you, you can get by alt uh, text which is great and encourages you, therefore, to add alt tags to all your images. So I really like React Testing Library. I hope I've convinced you to like it, too. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to find me during a break, lunch. Um, I'm happy to share stickers, code with you, show you code, answer questions. You can find me at elizfunk on Twitter. And I have the best email address in the world, which is funk at medium.com. <laughs> Thank you so much.